So say you have installed v2 and now you want to set off VS Code for it. That used to be kinda complicated, but now there's a nice extension you can install. Search up AutoHotkey v2 language support and install this extension. Well, thanks for watching and... <laughs> Nah, just kidding. Technically, you're done, but I want to actually show you what you're gonna get. That way, you can use the tools provided to their full potential. First of all, make sure your v2 folder isn't renamed from what it was after the installation. If you renamed it already, rename it back to the default shown on screen. Now go back to some v2 script. Ctrl Shift P and search for search language mode. Configure for .ahk or the hotkey 2. You might have noticed this button on the bottom left. You can use it to choose a version used to run your AHK scripts from VS Code. One huge disclaimer. Do not choose the UIA versions. For whatever reason, they fuck up the extension to the point that you can't even change it back and everything breaks. God damn it, Axel, you should have said so sooner. Don't worry, I have a solution for that. Search up settings.json. If you just have a folder open, choose folder settings. If you set up a workspace, choose workspace settings. You'll end up in this JSON file that has the interpreter as a setting. Go ahead and manually change the exe to the one without UA. Reload VS Code and everything should be fixed. Now, you don't actually have to click that button to choose your interpreter. There is a command you can look up to reach the same effect. So, if you want to, you can hide the button by right-clicking the gutter and pressing hide. Now, there are a few really useful commands I recommend you use. By typing in hk2 in your command palette, you'll see all the commands from the extension. Definitely check all of them out, but I will go over the two most useful ones. Let's first write some example code and set some breakpoints. Make sure this extension is also installed. And now we can debug our v2 scripts. Notice how I didn't need to set anything up? Yeah, we don't actually need to make a launch JSON or anything of that nature, just use the command. On the right you'll see your variables. Nothing appeared in the local section because my variable is actually global. Let's change that. Now the age variable appeared in the local section, as it should be. After we go over the line, the variable is initialized. One cool thing I haven't seen before is that we get the time it took to execute the line, so you can more easily see how well your code stands in terms of performance. When you debug, you can use the output debug command, and it will actually appear in the debug console. By the way, your debug console is likely to be in the bottom panel by default. You can move it to where I have it if you want to. VS Code is very customizable like that. Alright, we went over the debug command, but you don't have to debug just to run a script. There's a command for that too. Search for run script, and the extension will run the active script with the interpreter we chose earlier. The output panel will pop up and will say the script ran, and when that script exit apps, will say so, with the exit code and time the script was running for. You'd think output debug would work with this panel too, but unfortunately it only works in the debug console. Alright, let me teach you how to color your code however you want. Search for tokens and press enter. You'll see this menu. What you need to look for is the topmost line in TextMate scopes. Select and copy it, then go to your settings.json. First, editor token colored customizations. Then, TextMate rules. And here you'll color your code from now on. Let's create an object. It's going to have the scope of what we just copied. Now we create the settings object with two properties. Foreground is where you set the actual color. It accepts hex values for that. And don't worry if you don't know how to get a hex color, because in the actual settings you'll be able to choose it in this GUI. Now for the font style. Leave it an empty string if you just want the normal font. But there's also bold, italic, strike through, and underline. Now say you want to paint some code classes the same color, and you don't want to create an object for every code class. Make your scopes an array, and go on, adding more and more classes. If you ever have errors in this process, remember that JSON cares about commas a lot. When you want to use a different color, or a different font style, you should create a new object, just like the last one. Alright, we're done coloring the code. There are a few settings for the extension that I recommend. Here they are. Check out the link in the description for this whole file. The extension provides a lot of snippets and aids the auto-completion pretty well. There are two snippets of the extension that I want to show off. 
First of all, ZS Author generates a template for you to use to elaborate on the current file. This is nice because it's a way to standardize script descriptions. There is one more snippet that I think is even more useful. While inside of a function, use ZS Comment. This snippet will generate a complete template for your function. The colored ads you're seeing actually serve a purpose. The parameter hints for your functions are now far better. The explanation you leave for each parameter will only appear for that parameter. You can specify what the function returns and easily have clearly separated multiple lines. To do that, you have to leave a blank line in between in your comment. As you can see, the two lines don't overlap, so you can format your comments nicely this way. You might have noticed that a part of the snippet I typed in is still there. Naturally, it's going to leave an error, and you might not notice that it's there, because you get jumped to the tab stops of the comment template. Alright, we can try fixing this by using the built-in command instead. And that will probably be the better solution, but it's still unreliable in the 162 version of the extension. To make sure the comment template isn't just a copy of what was before, I changed the name of the function as well as the parameters. The variable currently highlighted was supposed to be num4, but after using the command it became just num. I think this is because the command and snippet send a few of undos. So for that reason, using the easier versions of this amazing feature might be pretty annoying. Was the actual solution? Doing it yourself. When you type a slash and two asterisks, the extension generates that fancy block comment you saw in the snippet template, so you can type out everything yourself. And it will work the same exact way as before. The two commented curly brackets at the top of my script is actually also a feature of the extension. You can easily create a faulting section between two commented curly brackets. This is really useful for me to not cause you annoyance with all the numerous directives I'm using. The comment features never stop, apparently, because there's one more. If your comment starts with two semicolons instead of one, it becomes a symbol you can easily jump to. Ah right, the extension brings symbols into AHK. Instead of scrolling trying to find the right function or variable, you can go to symbol and end up at the definition of the symbol you try to find. You don't even have to be in the same file, because with a different command you can start searching through your entire workspace. And end up not just at the declaration of the symbol, but in a whole different file altogether. This is a feature of VS Code that makes it incredibly easy to navigate through a lot of files and everything in them. And now, finally, it's available for AHK. Another thing the v2 extension improved massively is the go to definition command. It's far more robust and works pretty much always. A big advantage is also the fact that arrow functions are now considered actual functions. So they have symbols of their own, just as expected, and go to definition works for them. You just have to remember to put in the includes for everything you're going to use. Even if the includes happen somewhere else and it works, the extension has no way of knowing that. So be more elaborative with your includes to make sure autocomplete works. After all, no matter how many times you include a file, it will still only be included once. Now, what am I talking about with all these back then and used to? Before I discovered this extension, I used to modify AutoHotkey++ to make it work for v2 instead. I've made, I think, three videos on that, which are now unlisted. So, these amazing features really are a breath of fresh air in terms of quality. I don't need to make subpar solutions anymore to please the extension, and I no longer need to maintain those videos and the code I made along with them. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you can enjoy this amazing extension as much as I do. Bye bye!